Hello everyone and welcome to the video about IP addressing in IPv4. So the purpose of this video is for you to become familiar with the content of the IPv4 header and how this information is used, to understand how IP addressing works including subnetting, and then I would also say that to get a complete understanding of how this is done in practice, it's recommended to learn also about NET, Networks Address Translation, and that topic is covered in a later video. So if we look into the um, IP version 4 header, we will see that it's usually a 160-bit header. So you will have five lines and you will have 32 bits in each line. It can be longer um, because there is also fields for options. So this can be seven, uh, zero or more uh, words and lines. Um, there is a, if you look into what is the content of it, there is a version of it. Uh, so this tells which version of IP we're using. This will usually be uh, version 4. Um, then there is the header length, which is defined as the number of words or also called the number of lines. So the usual length here would be 5 because you have the 5 lines, which are the 160 bits. And then you have the TOS, the type of service, which can be used for quality of service, but in reality it's not so often used. And then you have a total length uh, which is including both the, um, the header and the, um, the payload. Then you have some identification, some uh, fragment off offset, don't fragment and more of fragments, which is used uh, the, ident the identification for telling which uh, header, uh, which number it is, and the fragment in order to handle if the packet is being split up to smaller packets, it might be that, the, that you need to split the packet because some networks have a limitation of how large uh, an IP packet they can handle. And if, if that is necessary, then you use the, um, the, fragment, the more fragment bit to say this packet has been fragmented and you use the fragment offset to say um, um, which a number of fragment this is. Then you have a time to live, which is used to make sure that you don't have a packet that lives forever. So when you are routing in the internet, every time you need you meet a new router, then this time to live is reduced by one. So even if there is even if there is an error in the routing tables when you're using the hop by hop routing, you are sure that the packets cannot circulate around forever. You have a protocol which is about which protocol is used on top of it, and you have a header to checksum which is checking the, um, um, uh, the header and checking that the header is received correctly. Then of course you have the source address, which is an IP address, and a destination address, which is also an IP address. And both of these are 32-bit addresses. Um, yes. So the IP addressing, addressing is that you have 32-bit addresses. And usually these are represented at a.b.c.d, where each letter is indicating 8 bits. The address is divided into network and host addresses, and the division depends on whether it's a class A, class B, or class C network. So what you can see in the figure here is that if it is a class A network, then you have only a few networks, networks but each of these networks can have a lot of hosts. If you have a class B network, uh, then you have a larger number of networks but a smaller number of hosts. And if you have a class C network, then you have the largest number of networks and a smaller number of hosts. This uh, division was made traditionally in order to accommodate that every organization could have their own network. And depending on how many people were in each organization, they would have networks of different sizes. Um, so here you, have, you can see how many different networks and how many different uh, um, hosts which are uh, accommodated by these. The problem with this is, of course, that you have a lot of wasted address space due to this classification. So if you have an organization that needs 100,000 hosts, then it needs to, be, to have a class A network, and then there are only 128 of them, so we are soon running out of it. So this traditional um, division has shown to be problematic. Um, also, originally it was sufficient if a router had information about host at its own network and then uh, it would have information of all other networks 
but not the host of these networks. So that was also the, the design idea behind it, was that you could easily do routing because you only needed to keep detailed information of your own network. Um, what you then started doing in order to overcome some of the problems was to split the networks into more subnets, which could be administrated individually. So even if you had one network, for example, this could be a university network, um, which was really big, uh, then for each host on this network, you would need to keep track of each router in the network. You would need to keep track of all the hosts in the network and then all the networks which would exist otherwise um, in other places. But you would need to keep track of all hosts in the organization. And there was a need to kind of decentralize this network administration. So what you did about it was to create what is called subnets. So now you can divide the network into a number of subnets, which can be administrated uh, individually. Um, so what we do with subnet is um, that instead of all tables of all hosts on the actual network, you can, it's only, it's sufficient, so it's enough to have tables with all hosts on the actual subnet. Also, uh, tables should be added to other uh, subnets within the actual network and then we need to know the subnet mask so be the division between subnet and host because what you really do is that you split what was the host address space between a host space and a subnet space so you, you have um, the same number of networks but within each of these networks within the A, B and C networks uh, then you have instead of that many hosts you divide it into subnet and hosts um, the way it's done with the subnetting is that each network has a subnet mask and the size of the subnet mask corresponds to the number of bits not used for the host. So if you call it like, if you write subnet comma zero, it's obtained by binary, binary ending address and subnet mask. This is actually quite smart. So if you take the subnet, which is called 130.50.15.6, and we have a subnet mask called 255, 255, 252.0, then we can look at, uh, so which are these, um, um, then we can calculate what is the subnet uh, of this. So let's take an example. Assume that we have um, an IP address called 130.50.15.6, and we have a subnet mask of 255, 255, 255.0. And we want to find out which subnet this belongs to. So what we do is that we keep the first 22 bits and then we zero out the rest. So if you look at the 130.50.15.6, then we keep the 130, we keep the 50, and then about the rest. So if you look at what, what 15 is in, um, in binary numbers, it's four zeros and four six. And because the subnet address here is um, um, 255, 255, 252, but 0, zero, then we take the 252, which corresponds to the first six bits. So we have the, the 15, the four zeros, the four ones, and we keep the first bits of these, and the rest is zero. So that gives us four zeros, two ones, and two zeros, which is 12, and the last, um, so what was the 6 in the original uh, address, when we, um, when we binary end it with 0, it becomes 0. So in total it becomes um, 230.50.12. So that is the solution. And that example finalizes this video. So please let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks.